Ladies and gentlemen, today I present to you him. Listen, if you haven't been scarred by what this dumbass can do to you, today's video might just change your overall opinion on everybody's favorite worm, the orthworm. As always, make sure to hit that like button, it really does help out the channel, and subscribe if you're new here. I post a bunch of Pokemon content, and I'm having a good time with the new generation. Today, I've got a match against my good buddy Cypher. He has a scissor that's knees go right into the ground because Game Freak makes fantastic games, and he also actually posts great Wi-Fi content. If you guys would like to check out his channel, definitely check out the link in the description or in the comments. Uh, he is an underrated channel at the moment, and he's got some good battles. So anyway, he leads off with a scissor, of course. I decide to lead off with the absolute crackhead Primeape, who looks like he went through a three-week bender, and my main plan is just to go right for the U-turn. Now, what's unfortunate about being faster as a Choice Scarf Annihilate is that I get the U-turn off first, and now I basically have to go into something and expect him to U-turn, and then he gets a matchup, and then pretty much we just changed up our lead here, but he gets to choose what he wants against it. However, he actually just decides to go right for a Swords Dance here. He knows that the Scizor is a very big threat to my team, and even Mr. Hanky the Christmas Poo, shout out to Papa Hefe, he gave me the idea for the nickname, straight up Mr. Hanky. Uh, even this thing, max HP, max defense, cannot take two bullet punches. So, rather than coming in and letting my fat ass set up some stealth rocks, I unfortunately now have to go for the yawn, basically to try to limit uh, this thing's sweeping potential right from the start. You hate being set up on right from turn one, and uh, I mean, I do have the goldfish on my team. Can kill this guy, but I just have to basically get a, an easy switch into it. So... I'm going to go ahead and conserve my Clodsire. The main reason for that is because I see he has the Clydesire on his side. It's an easy switch in with the Water Absorb, and I do want to save that thing for later. And I figure it's time to bring in the Alaskan Bullworm, who <laughs> comes in looking absolutely menacing. Got to be the scariest Mon in the game. Um, but he goes for the U-turn there, which is a great play. Doesn't want the Scizor to be put to sleep. Now he gets a switch into whatever he wants against the Orthworm. So, unfortunately... This gator is about the last thing I want to see. Orthrum does have the smile on his face, but he is afraid. So I got to switch his ass out. I did take a bunch from the U-turn, um, but I figure I should be able to try to set that thing up later. And for now, I have to assess the absolute threat that uh, is this thing. So he goes for the Earth Power, which actually tells me he has forgotten about the Earth Eater ability, um, which is interesting to note. So the Earth Power wouldn't have actually affected me. However, I know this thing's probably going to want to start setting up some Torch Songs. Um, so I actually end up going for the Parting Shot. Now, this Grim Snarl gets access to Parting Shot in this generation, makes it absolutely insane. I honestly expected him to switch, try to go for the Parting Shot to get um, a better matchup on my end, but honestly, that's still fine, because with this thing, uh, with some, some drop special attack, it's not going to be able to do too much, and now I get it basically an easy switch into old Bug Eyes, the snack that smiles back, Goldfish, bitch. He comes in on a Torch Song, and um, it's not going to do too much with the dropped attack as well, so... He is going to go ahead and get that boost from the Torch Song, but I have a great matchup here because I am Choice Specs with the Stab Dark Pulse. Should be able to take that thing out, if not do a whole bunch. Uh, so I have no real option other than just kind of stand and go for that just to play it safe as he decides to go into Young Cletus, the absolute legend. Again, a very fitting nickname for the Clod Sire. One of my favorite Gen 9 Pokemon. We love this dude. So it unfortunately isn't going to do quite half. So here... I'm thinking, okay, I actually decide to switch into Hanky, but I make a misplay and I'm an idiot. I'm, I really was this entire time thinking about going into Earthworm. Um, I make the dumb play and instead bring in my own Clod Sire, thinking he's not going to Earthquake, maybe set up Stealth Rock, but yeah, he, he just straight up quakes my ass. Hanky goes down, um, but what this does do is it opens up basically an opportunity for my team to kind of do what it needs to do. Now, the team that I'm using is built around the Ostrich and the Worm. So either modes can kind of set up here. Um, but I'm thinking I'm going to go right into the Earthworm because I did see him try to use Earth Power against it earlier. If I can set up an Iron Defense like this thing is built to do, we could potentially start to go on a nice little Alaskan Bullworm tear because that is just its tongue. You have not seen the whole worm yet, my guy. So I'm going to go for the Iron Defense here. I'm thinking he does have some answers to this thing, mainly in the form of of the gator back there but i'm thinking you know i have an answer for that so i go for the iron defense get that sharp defense boost and he does go for the earthquake thinking this thing is steel type nope i eat that shit for breakfast and lunch save a little bit of leftovers for dinner and i'm able to get that nice little heal so honestly people really forget about this thing's ability uh, even though it's a titan in the game it's never used competitively so it's my goal to make earthworm op so now i just decide to go for the earthquake i know it's going to be able to knock this thing out i don't even need to add any extra nonsense there so now Claude Sire is down. I'm sitting at a nice little defense boost, plus I can I can get this worm going how I need it to. So, he now decides to bring in his best answer for the worm. Um, and I'm thinking, I wanted to try to set up Orthworm after having taken care of this, but it's looking like I'm going to have to do everything I can to try to stop it now. So that is exactly why 
I'm about to go full Terra on his ass. We're digivolving into probably the most bozo looking Pokemon, literally of all time. This thing already looks dumb as hell, and then you put on a big helmet on him. <laughs> He's just ground as shit. He's got the world on his head, and my dude cannot be stopped. So I go full ground type here, which allows me to just take a neutral torch song. I know that I can live that. Um, I can then pop my old citrus berry. I say delicious. I've already had I've already had a two course lunch, but that's fine. Just go ahead and pop the old citrus berry, which is amazing. And now I get the stab earthquake, which is definitely needed to be able to take care of this thing. So it's super solid to be able to tear it as a defensive type, but then also get a super strong now stab earthquake. So that doesn't quite take out Uncle Iroh here, but my team doesn't have the most reliable switch in to a now plus one gator. So what I decided to do is actually just stay in and luckily it works out for me because he's actually gonna over predict, goes for the earth power, assuming expecting the goldfish to come back in. I eat that shit up once again. This boy is fed up out here. I go for another earthquake. And that is going to take care of the Skeledurge. Now, I decided to stay in mostly because it wasn't worth the risk trying to switch into Goldfish or something like Grimmsnarl. Because uh, I needed to take care of that thing. Plus, um, I do need the Goldfish for a potential Scizor later. So, that worked out in my favor. Um, he tries to make the prediction there. doesn't pay off for him. And now the Worm is in full effect. So, I decided to save this thing for later as, of course, he brings in the Clydesur. Uh, that's kind of why I was reluctant to go for the Ground Terra type in the first place. Because I know I don't take special attacks super well. Uh, so I decided to actually switch here. I'm going to bring in Grimmsnarl. The, the beauty of Grimmsnarl is with my Prankster ability, I can decide to either set up Reflect Light Screen with my Light Clay item. It's going to stick around for the maximum amount of turns, which is going to be eight. Uh, or I could just decide to go for the Parting Shot. So he's actually going to end up switching that thing out. He knows he can't touch me that well as I decide to take this turn to go for a Light Screen. Unfortunately for me, that turns out to be a shitty idea because in comes Majestic Ass Roaring Moon and he's going to get an attack boost upon switching in. And now I'm really looking in the face of death here as this thing can definitely start to sweep, especially even with just a plus one is a very scary Pokemon. So I'm going to actually stay in. I know that I can probably take at least one attack or I could try to catch him going for a dragon dance here. Unfortunately, again, he decides to Terra. When Mons just decide to randomly change their type, there is not much you can do. My boy put some balloons on his head and now he's a flying type. And I know pretty much what is about to happen. It's going to be carrying acrobatics. Stab already used up its item, and this thing is going to be one of the scariest mons ever. So he does decide to go for the Dragon Dance. At least I am able to get a play rough, and I do honestly get some pretty nice chip damage, and I even get the attack drop. So that is pretty damn solid. You can't ask for much more than that. And now since he decided to set up, I actually get a free turn to go for the Prankster Reflect. Um, and that's actually super nice, because this does allow me to take an Acrobatics. Thanks to that attack drop, I believe, Creature is going to live with 32 HP. Let's fucking go. We got the Snatched Waste out here looking amazing. And now, the beauty in the fact that this thing actually teared its type to flying, uh, I can actually go for Parting Shot. Because if you're unfamiliar with the way it works, the ability Prankster makes you always go first, uh, unless the opponent is a Dark type. So before, I couldn't go for the Parting Shot. Now I can. And the Grimmsnarl is showing exactly why it's like the best support possible on this team. So I've now got a Reflect up, I've got a Parting Shot on the thing, and I've kind of done everything I can do to limit this thing's sweep as much as possible. And it's time to bring back in the motherfucking Worm. So he wants to go for another Dragon Dance here, which is a good play, because he is going to need some more boost if he wants to break through uh, my more defensive boys, especially the Absolute Legend with the Earth on his head. So I do actually carry Rock Slide on this thing. I'm going to go right for it just to see how much it's going to be able to do, even with an Acrobatics. Um, and luckily, look at the damage. Behind the Reflect, you literally cannot touch the Earthworm. Um, I am able to get the Rock Slide off. I pull out my hands for that one just to, to give him the hands real quick. And down goes the crazy-ass new Salamence. This is definitely one of the scarier sweepers in the game, so seeing that thing go down to an Earthworm is satisfying as shit. Also, important to note, I do still have the benefit of that Reflect being up for a few more turns because I do still have the Light Clay Reflect up, and in comes the Scizor once again. Now, uh, of course, this Orthworm is meant to basically go for, you know, Iron Defenses and Body Presses, but it's not really seeming like I need it at this point, as I'm just going to go right for another nice little Stab Earthquake as this thing tries to Swords Dance in my face, because you are definitely going to need some boosts if you want to touch uh, <laughs> the fucking Alaskan Bullworm's tongue. So, this here is an all-out offensive Scizor with some big meaty claws. He decides to go for the bullet punch. This thing is life orb. With the sword stance, I'm able to live because the worm is the goat and I'm able to fire off one more earthquake on the thing and that is going to take care of the scissor. So uh, if that was able to knock me out with the bullet punch, would have been a scary mon to have to worry about that priority, but the worm is able to save me from that and that is amazing. So now he gets a switch. He's able to bring in this weird ass like slug snail thing. I have not played against this dude at all. Um, its move pool is pretty damn lacking. It's a, a dark grass type. 
And uh, I do have the body press for it. So I try to go for it. Unfortunately, he does outspeed and down goes the rampage of the worm. But I'm honestly super proud of my guy. Uh, I mean, he didn't even do what he was really built to do, which is just basically iron defense and body press stuff. Because I saw he had multiple dark types. So I was thinking that was going to get him. But it, it turned out the Alaskan, all he had to do was just put on his fucking helmet and just earthquake away. So uh, you love to see it now. I have a couple different options on what I want to switch into here. He is down to two Pokemon. He's got the Wo Chien, the Snail Thing, and he has the Clydesur in the back. So uh, I decide my easiest win condition here is just going to be going into the snack that smiles back. I can just go right for a nice little overheat. Guaranteed with the choice backs that this thing is going to go down to that. And then even allowing the lobster to come in and take care of the fish, I should be able to just get a free switch. Revenge kill that thing. So the, the, the worm really, really paved the way to the victory here. So amazing. Anyway, that thing goes down. He's now going to go into Larry. And unfortunately, you know, on most days, I would like to live like Larry. Today, I would not enjoy living like Larry. How many SpongeBob references can we fit into a Wi-Fi battle? I may have just hit the record, not gonna lie. So I do actually outspeed. I go for the overheat, even with the drop special attack, uh, with the choice specs and the resistance, it's still gonna do near half, which is basically all I need to do. I need to just kind of chip it to range, uh, where I know that Choice Scarf Annihilate can come in and kind of do what he does best. I like to run the, the Scarf Annihilate, uh, because most sets you're gonna be seeing is like bulk up with... Uh, you know, just basically Rage Fist and stuff, but in like Rest and things like that. But I like the I like the utility of the Scarf Boy. So I come in, um, I can just go ahead and absolutely punch the shit out of this here lobster. And we are eating good tonight, boys. That's going to be the conclusion of the match. I thought that was a pretty fun one. Uh, the Orthworm catching, catching my boy off guard. Um, and it's actually the first time I tried to use that worm. So you love to see it. Anyways, make sure to leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed. And I will be back with some more battles soon. See ya.